And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some bilge water harrowing. Uh, we're going to be playing a deck that's going to be kind of like the Noxus harrowing deck that was really popular for the past month or so, but switching over to bilge water. So, you know, like we're going to be playing some early stuff with bilge water up the curve. You know, we got misfortune that's going to be able to, um, you know, hopefully level up of course but each one of your attacks is going to be even better with misfortune we have some ways to get some powder kegs with petty officer and dreadway deckhand for your misfortune trigger and your make it rains um but then we have like our overwhelm stuff right like chum the waters is like our bacillus grider being a 5-2 overwhelm and giving something a vulnerable um we have gangplank another big overwhelm thing kind of like our darius and uh, then we have Sheriff Lariat Rose, Summon Trigger, granting everything vulnerable. And so that could even work out with Harrowing, like how we give, can give things vulnerable and um, have our Overwhelm units be able to get the extra damage in. Um, this one looks pretty fun. We also got like some Fearsome with our Arachnoid Horror. Um, as far as what one drop to play, I, I did switch this over to Warden's Prey. Um, instead of Shell Shocker, there's not like a great, great one drop to play. Like, you know, maybe thinking like Prowling Cutthroat, but we don't have any ways to pump up Pr Prowling Cutthroat. I think Warden's Prey is just, just honestly a good card. Like it, it looked great for us, the, our last deck um, that we just played with the, the Spooky Teemo. Uh, there's a lot of really good Last Breath followers that cost three or less, especially for a super aggressive deck. And this is something we can just um, attack in with no avail for it dying with misfortune um so that's good and you know we can use this to block get some more card advantage and stuff like that but anyway let's try some bilge water harrowing whoops this looks pretty fun pretty interesting something different let's go give it a try lab works with the bits number one cheer leader for the month <laughs> i guess not like a cheerleader but cheer space leader <laughs> there you go there you go thanks loveworks what's up colby yeah we, we we're in masters um we have 122 lp it's a number that goes up and down you uh gain somewhere between gain and lose somewhere between 15 and 25 lp for each win and loss <laughs> all right discard deep this discard deep deck's becoming pretty popular and the spooky teemo deck was fantastic against it we that that's like just a perfect matchup and uh, if you've missed that video, those y'all watch on YouTube, you can check that one out. It was like our our fourth game, I think. Um, you can see why that's a fantastic matchup. I think I keep these. No, we'll get rid of Glimpse Beyond. Like, they're not going to have removal. So it's not like we're going to be responding to removal with a Glimpse Beyond. We would just be waiting to, and just like sacrificing something to Glimpse Beyond just to draw two cards. Hey, Herman. Anything else? <laughs> uh, no, you do not get the Rex plunder effect with harrowing. Because, um, Re the plunder effects are play effects, and so you do not get them um, whenever they're summoned. They're not summoned. Effects. So not that lucky. There we 
go, that fits. Warren's Prey just trades and gets us another body out there, which is definitely good. But yeah, if you're struggling against Discard Deep, go with Puff Caps. Because their deck's all about rifling through their deck and drawing tons and tons of cards. And you can't really keep drawing cards against Puff Caps. So that's a real good way to shut down their deck. Hey, Cabo. Cool, you're back. I made one change. I took out Shell Shocker in the one drop slot for Warden's Prey. Already it looked good where Shell Shock, you know, like Shell Shocker would have just trade with the 1 1. Warden's Prey did also, but we got a Yeti Yearling. So that was cool. Um. I technically have less mana because of that. Alright, I was hoping they wouldn't block because, you know, we could have the two damage make it rain that would kill the Twisted Fate anyway, but I thought it was worth it because I could see them not blocking. Okay, well that still kills the Twisted Fate. We do one damage there. We can save this, make it rain. We already dealt damage to the Nexus. Sparrow, thanks for the donation deck there. So yeah, so that'll be for meme tier Tuesday. I gotcha. I will not be slain by whatever you are. Keep up, keep up. Okay. So the Shell Shocker was for the parlay. Makes sense. Let's try to have that immediately. Alright, so we're going to be doing damage to them this turn, which will level up Gangplank.
I kind of feel like this Nautilus is going to be attacking me this turn, and I guess that means I have to chump block with the Sheriff Lariat Rose. Which is not an ideal scenario. But I feel like that's going to happen. They're only just a couple of cards away from deep with all the cards they've been playing this turn. Okay. I guess not, but... That goes away. So the main question is, do we cast Harrowing? Or not? If I cast Harrowing, we get another Spray Fin and a couple Jagged Butchers. What do they have that punishes me for doing this? I'm not sure. I don't know why I wouldn't do this. So we're going to do it. Yeah, y'all are saying they don't really have anything. I don't think they can have Ruination. Like, Devour the Depths can take out two things, right? Like, it can, it can eat something and then block something else. But I get three things. Yeah, same with Twisted Fate. Yellow card deals with two things. Stuns and then blocks. So it deals with two things. But we get three things. Unless they had, like, Twisted Fate red card. And then also that plus Mega Rain. But then that could... Yeah, like, that would be something... Good thing we got that extra one, because if I would have gone straight to attacks, if they had Mystic Shot, they would have stayed alive. No, they wouldn't have, because they would have the six, they would have deal the six five. All right, GG's. Yeah, Sheriff with Harrowing, definitely pretty good. Um... I think I keep all of these. Yeah, I'm gonna keep all these. This is a matchup where Warden's Prey is much, much better than Shell Shocker because the one drop's gonna be dying. Um, but uh, yeah, this will get us value whenever it dies. This lets them play Navarro's and Sentry if they did have Navarro's and Sentry. Okay, no. I guess they're they probably don't with like the Anivia Trindomir, so maybe I didn't need to chum the waters. 
Oh, they went to Avalanche. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have kept this Chum the Waters. Problem is, all these things die to Avalanche. I don't have a good. Don't have a good play at all. Alright, we're gonna go Chum now. And now they use Avalanche, that, that takes this turn. And then I have Petty Officer still. Shell Shocker. Still got there with the Shell Shocker. But it's all about pressuring the opponent's mana. That's what this. Matchup's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glimpse Beyond's probably our best card to have. Let's see. I probably should have glimpsed. I should have cast Glimpse Beyond. I don't know why I didn't. I should have. I, I don't know why I didn't. I really should have. Awesome, J-Paz. Cool, glad to hear. Great. Love that one. I, yeah. That was just a, a mistake by me. I just kind of clicked okay to the Withering Whale a little bit too fast and then realized, oh wait. Punish now. I don't draw my two cards. I did trade it with a five mana spell, so that's not so bad. These old eyes still see far and clear. Warden's prey has been pretty good. Virtually, mind mind meld is slow, and we've played one spell so far this game. I play this. No, we don't get to. In Amorosa's name. So we would set the power and health to 1-1. One, one. Uh, not the best power and health. Not Anivia. Gotta go with the flow. Do not 
stand in my way. It's probably better to have. So I want to clear the space up for. Clearing the space up for the powder keg. Stop, Harvey. Slow also. All of our spells are slow. Clutch Withering Whale. That was a Clutch Withering Whale. He started without me. <laughs> yeah, we got Bilgewater Harrowing. Um, yeah, Rekindlers could fit in here. It's not in here, but yeah, there there could be some rekindlers in here. I mean, it would be great for this matchup. This would be the matchup for rekindler. The flames, nor the deaths could claim me. See, there's there's a problem with playing this is with playing the gang plank is the powder kegs of them challenging the powder kegs. Yeah, I mean, I don't... Basically, just have, like, some... Just have... To beat Ezreal decks, all you have to do is have large units and, um... Like, like the Freljord... Um... The Frostbite midrange decks are perfect, especially, especially if you want to beat the Ezreal decks, you play the version with all, like, the... Um... With the three mana five fours. All you have to do is just have things that have a lot of, you know, units that have a lot of health, have some protection spells like Elixir of Irons and things like that too. I'm not gonna put gang I don't wanna put Gangplank in front of the Trindomir. Which I don't know, maybe maybe I'm supposed to put uh, maybe I'm supposed to put Gangplank in front because of harrowing. We got to go, we were going wide every single turn. They did a really good job of of stopping us. You know they had a good number of withering whales. 
everything and avalanches and GG's and then that, like that's how that deck wins is you have the War Mother's Call. I was trying to not play around Ruination, but I guess I, I did play into War Mother's Call. Like you just want that's like that's the recipe for that deck to win is just all removal and then War Mother's Call. You know, they like they didn't play a single unit. It was just all removal, play a War Mother's Call. That brings your threats into play, and you just keep playing removal. That's the that's how that deck wins. We uh, played that yesterday. We never had a single game like that. Like that that's, um, but that's how exactly what you want. Of course, lip. Yeah, you can always put uh, you can always put to deck list in, in chat and ask for. Ask for help or ask for feedback or just see what people think. Definitely. That's what chat's for. Help. You know, like to try to help each other out. Did I keep Make It Rain? Did I just keep Make It Rain? No, I didn't keep Make It Rain in my hand, did I? I hope not. I was kind of talking and not really paying attention to what my opponent was, I guess. Alright, just gonna go for the Gangplank level up. No prey, no pay. Yeah, huge audience today. Welcome everybody. If you're newer to the stream, this is what I do every day. I'm playing like around this time. I started four hours ago. We play four decks every single day and then they go up on YouTube. And here's a link to the, the YouTube channel. Over. Um, on YouTube, it's just youtube.com slash Hawktie. And then here on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash Hawktie Live. Because we're live. Yeah, I'm here every day at this time, uh, except for Wednesdays is going to be a late stream. I'm going to be, I'll make some kind of announcement about that, but I'll, I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to have for like the schedule moving forward is like a fish in water. <laughs> um, always this time, except for Wednesdays later. Wednesdays will start basically an hour from now. So three out of five for Gangplank. Um, if I want to just throw a parlay at them, we're four out of five, but the problem with that is then if I play Gangplank next turn, I don't really use, you know, I don't have, like, Glimpse Beyond or, you know, I want that extra one mana. If we had three mana, I would throw a parlay at it, but I want, I want that extra mana. The flames, the death can claim me. I want two mana here, either for Glimpse Beyond or for whatever. If they go Thermogenic Beam, Gangplank will get a Glimpse Beyond. They don't get an Ezreal ability. So Yasuo Stun Control Deck. Uh, you, you only play Yasuo Stun Control? Is that what you're saying? Or your opponents are playing Yasuo Stun Control? Let's get to it. I guess easy way, or e either way, Kite, what you can do... Mobilytics has a wonderful stats page. Maybe what I'd recommend doing is heading over to that mobile app, Mobilytics um, stats page, and you, know, you can see all sorts of regions and what they, how they do, and how they do against other stuff. You can go to like whatever region you're struggling against. Like if, if you're struggling against the Yasuo deck, go to whatever the combinations of regions it is. Click on that and see what what regions it loses to. That could be that could be a nice tool. In the toolbox. Alright, what are we doing? Chump Wumpers. Clumpa Wumps. Go with the flow. 
All right, but anyway, let's see. What's the next question? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Well, Cabo already answered that one. Okay, cool. All right, so they tapped out. Wait, sorry. I meant to let this happen first. All right, now make it rain. So they're not going to be getting rid of the powder kegs. They tapped out. So they. They're obviously, like, setting up for Withering Whale, right? Like, we're, they're gonna kill all these things. Like, all, all of my stuff is dead. We can pretty fairly assume that. I'm going to put pressure on them if they want to Withering Whale. No! We're trying to do as much damage as we can. Arguably, playing Petty Officer would be better, but if, I play, if they have Mystic Shot for the other card, or Thermogenic Beam, if I go Petty Officer, they definitely kill Misfortune. I go this way, they don't kill Misfortune. This is an ephemeral spray fin. Don't need to be worried too worried about that one. Okay, so you're you're playing Yasuo Stun Control. Um, that's that's pretty tough. It's not going to be. It's not a great deck, to be honest. Do I go for Harrowing next turn or? I don't know. Are they going to be playing Ruination? Yeah, Ionia just in, in general, as a region, Ionia is the worst region by s such a long ways. It's it's really hard to find reasons to play Ionia with Will of Ionia and Shadow Assassin being nerfed. It's a really difficult region to play. Guess I'm just gonna be going with harrowing, and so I'm not gonna play deckhand to not fill up any room. I don't love like I don't love this interaction with gangplank and harrowing. How gangplank puts the powder keg in play, and that just takes up one of your harrowing slots. I am reborn of salt and bright. That's, that's definitely a negative in our deck. It's a, it's a negative of playing Gangplank and Harrowing together. Because the, that happens. Like, like once you like, zap Sprayfin. 
Would have been a lot better there. Well, darn. That's a pretty big negative part. So we'll force them to spend a mana and use a removal spell on my little powder keg. Which is not removal going for anything else. Wow, no removal for the powder keg. That's big. That's big. Get a spider back? Sure. You have a spider. Alright, yeah! Finish it out! Finish it out. Yeah, Kinko Elusives is also her pretty bad with the Shadow Assassin. Um, with the Shadow Assassin nerf. For myself, I like playing... As far as that deck goes, I like playing... Um, Zed and Sejuani. I think that that's that's better. That's the best version of the elusives. I don't play Kinku. Wayfinder. Let's see if I can find my version of that deck for you. This is my version of the deck. I haven't tried it since the Shadow Assassin nerf. The Shadow Assassin nerf is pretty rough. this arachnoid horror on turn two. You can see the Nebastian border from here. Now I kinda wish I would have Mulligan to the Warden's Prey. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Boo. So I don't even know if I attack with Warden's Prey. Maybe I don't. No, I don't think I do. Attacking with Warden's Prey would just allow them to... Sure. That was a waste of a Brittle Steel, just for three life. I'm very happy with that. The Warden's Prey, you know, like, they would just be able to block and then trade with their... Um, or, like, they'd be able to draw another card, and the later... Like, they're eventually going to draw a card of the century, but the later that you can 
have them draw that card, the better for you. Because, like, if you think about it, like, let's say you have, you're going to have 10 cards in a game. Would you rather have the, the 10 cards on turn 1, where you can see, okay, well, I'm going to play my 1-drop my on turn 1, my 2-drop on turn 2, and you can curve out perfectly, or would you just draw one card a turn for 10 turns? Like, turn 1, you get one card, hope, you hope it's the 1-mana card and not the 6-mana card, and so on. Obviously, you'd much rather have all of the cards right away, you, you get the best turns. And that's kind of the theory of trying not to have the Avaros and Sentry trade early. Because you don't... You know, trying to get this thing to trade as, as late as possible so that they don't have access to more cards and better turns until later on. Probably take two. My hand's not good. I think if if they want to pass, I am fine with passing. Okay, nope, they want to reckoning. Which I'm not as fine with, but that's just how it goes. Just wish our gangplank was closer to being leveled up. There's some cool cards. Okay, so do I want to play gangplank or play a random assortment of other things? The assortment of other things puts more power into play. Probably want to put the most power into play. Not yet. So we'll play our Curse Keeper. We'll parlay it. It'll do one damage to the Curse Keeper. Kill it. One damage to them. Level up for Gangplank. Put a 3-3. And now we got 7 power in play. They wasted that brittle steel earlier. If they would have just, if they would have kept brittle steel, they could have had that. So four out of five now for Gangplank. Nothing escapes my watch. Sharpen the blades, secure the kill. Oh, I'm glad I didn't play my champions. I wish I had that parlay. Make it rain. Harrowing. Pain is nothing. That's this is the main reason why we didn't want to play something pre-combat before was that such one e. Hmm. 
I don't know if I play one of these pre-combat and let them Glory Seeker kill it, but maybe I do. do you uh, probably not. I know, right? We kind of want everything to die. For glory, you're mine. Fortune favors the bold. This doesn't change a damn thing between us. <laughs> if you insist. Safeguard our own. Look out for reavers. Ready the torches. Prove your worth. Let's see what they got. This gangplank will will be a six six. That will not save gangplank. Or that that's not gonna save Sejuani. Oh wait, no, it's that six nine. So yeah, that does the six nine. Never mind, I was thinking. Gotta save Sejuani. This is why Sejuani should just be a five five, not a five six. <laughs> this right here, it's ridiculous. You don't know how we can lose with two Harrowings, really? They can just kill us. I don't know. Lose to this deck? You can certainly lose to this deck. Because, yeah, they just go... You'll see true leadership. You know, harsh... You know, they have the mana now with... 10 mana for Ash, Harsh Winds. So I think I have to play the Harrowing here on defense. Which again, we get that really crappy, get that Powder Keg. Could block with two things against the Harsh Winds. That is really awkward with this powder keg. Line up. I don't know how we could lose with two harrowings. I don't know how we win. I mean, I guess I try harrowing. Try this. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't attack with Sejuani to the powder keg. That seems like a pretty easy attack and you know overwhelm, but it's good for me that they didn't, because then my well, I guess it's the same either way. I mean we get the, an extra powder keg, but Oh. Well, yeah, I mean it's yeah, I don't know why that they at least didn't have that attack. This could be good. Break their legs. Could be good. Fire. Avarosa, guide me. So yeah, we're forcing them basically to have harsh winds and brittle steel. Basically, they need they need both. Like, they, they need another Frostbite card, which I guess they do, because the their life's great. Right. Now. And then they can just throw two things in front of these. This will be quick. I'll protect the villages. All right, well, we almost had them. These are our lands. That does four damage to everything, and this does one damage to everything. So we know they have Crystal Arrow on top. A chill in the air. Uh, 
Yeah, Trifarian Assessor is pretty broken. Because, yeah, you're right. You're right. Like, two Trifarian Assessors, they drew a lot of cards. Um, you know, it'd be nice if they didn't just have millions of cards like this. Unfortunately, we drew all the the last two draw stabs for both these Sheriff Lariat Roses. I don't, I can't draw it. I can't play two of them in the same turn. So this is real awkward. Up there in the mountains. They were out of the 20, 23 cards. They were the two worst cards to draw, and we drew them back to back. Two out of twenty three, then one out of twenty two. The worst cards to draw. That's life. Feels like a bacon. All right, down to one. Not dead. Oh, heck. Not start trouble. Just in. Not dead yet. I need more runs. Let fly. Bilgewater's lost. Well, the good news is their their crystal arrow is gone. Right, that's the good news. The bad news is they still have millions of cards because of Trifarian Assessor. I was hoping that they w wouldn't be able to go this wide. That's why I, you know, tried killed something with that Lariat, but nah, these these cards are just too cheap. Still had Glory Seeker, Omen Hawk, and Trapper. I can only block three. Things are too big. Light the signal fires. You have GGs. Maybe that's just the one thing that... Maybe they don't have to change too much about Frostbite midrange, but maybe they just change Trifarian Assessor to just draw a card. If you have, you know, if you have something power five or greater, draw a card. Instead of, you know, draw three, draw four. It's just too many cards. Because that, that was with us doing a... You know, we just lost there after we got pretty far ahead and then also had to do five damage to all of your units and nexus and we still lost like you shouldn't be losing after dealing five to everything right you wouldn't think so
have a vulnerable monkey at all. has fearsome so the powder monkey doesn't get to block it doesn't really make any sense to play other things and allow their um, powder monkey to block Yeah, very good. Grass the Undying for sure. Very good. So, three out of five for Gangplank. Just close to leveling up. We gotta be worried about that. It's four out of six. So I think this makes sense now because they probably need to do like that whole grass the undying kind of thing again. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Double pair for the next kill. You can't do this. And I have, I feel like I have to do long tooth on the Thresh just in case for some reason something weird happens where Thresh levels up. Like I don't want to do Petty Officer and then Thresh levels up to be a four four. All right, four out of five. This game's looking pretty good. These Chum the Waters have looked real good, and now we have like Harrowing, even if they are able to kill a bunch of stuff, we still have Harrowing. Um, so that does look pretty good. I'm playing Make It Rain this turn. Now level up Gangplank. So at least Gangplank will have two health. I don't think it would change if question is what if Fizz's champion spell was also Chum the Waters? Would Fizz be a lot better or still gimmick? I don't think it would really change Fizz too much. It, Fizz would definitely be better with Chum the Waters as the upgrade, yes, but I don't think it would drastically change the viability of the card. So they do not have Ruination mana, so that's good. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Look at all these overwhelms. All right, that game was pretty sweet. That was a pretty sweet game right there. And a pretty cool little deck. Bilgewater Harrowing. Get to do something a little different. You know, good showing, three and two. We we lost that, that one to Frostbite Midrange, because Frostbite Midrange is amazing. But we got to do some other cool things, for sure. Um, Sheriff Laria Rose honestly didn't really look that good, to be honest. Like, for a six-mana card, it really didn't. And not definitely not good enough for just, like, a three of. There's a lot of times where it didn't really matter. I could certainly see instead going with like some citrus couriers to to help out misfortune and really help out gangplank also you know help out both of those cards um obviously citrus courier is worth worse with harrowing than lariat rose but you know maybe maybe you don't need like three you know you go like two and one kind of thing like where you can have a courier they can get you that extra attack and gain three life and do some healing like courier can be just amazing as as hard casting but Larry, I know Sheriff's better with Harrowing. Um, uh, maybe maybe a Siren? In, you know, like maybe you have a Siren also. I don't know. Like Sheriff just honestly didn't look very good. It really didn't. Um, you know, maybe a, a Siren, get, get the extra damage in there, draw a Misfortune. Um, but then, you know, you can just have, like, your stuff, like, your Riptide Rex and stuff like that, too, at the top end. Um, I mean, Riptide Rex is kind of broken. You pro probably want a Riptide Rex. Rekindler works, that's true, Rekindler does work great with Harrowing, so could be, could be a Rekindler also. Just, the Sheriff just didn't, didn't do very much. And yeah, Rekindler, like Rekindler bringing back Gangplank is a lot better than anything Sheriff could do. So I would kind of want, you know, maybe you just kind of split it up because at different, in different game states, these are going to be different. So instead of just splattering three of the same card as we saw against the, like against the Frostbite midrange, just having all three of those, it was very meh. But the Riptide Rex would have, you know, like if the three Sheriffs, maybe one of those was a Riptide Rex, maybe that helps us finish the game out with the Cannon Barrage or... You know, maybe Rekindler helps, or Courier gets us that extra attack. Who knows? I don't know. I think I kind of want to just um, take this slot of these three and just kind of play some different super powerful cards instead of just playing all three of the same. But yeah, there wasn't really a single time where the Sheriff looked good. Um, I do love Sheriff in different decks. Like, I think Sheriff with the Undying is absolutely amazing and things like that in different decks, but maybe not this deck and maybe not this format i think i'd rather have these kind of cards here all right so there we go so that's bilgewater harrowing those of y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there and leave those comments let me know what you think of the deck what you think of just all the decks everything like that always like seeing those comments but anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video